He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Eight masculine pronouns in one verse. I say, it ill befits a ghost. You agree? That is a man, a man, a man, a man. Eight times. There is not another verse in the whole Bible with eight masculine pronouns or eight feminine gender or eight neuter genders. There isn't. This is a unique verse for a unique personality, Muhammad. Man, man, man. Not a ghost, not a spook. But we are told he's a spirit. Is Muhammad a spirit? I say yes. That's what your Bible says. You see, every time the word spirit is used in your Bible, I'm telling the Christian, it doesn't stand for the Holy Ghost. Because in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it, we are told that seven spirits of God went out into the world. I say, you believe in seven Holy Ghosts? He says, no, there's only one Holy Ghost. I say, look, it's seven spirits. It means it should be seven Holy Ghosts. No, spirit doesn't stand for Holy Ghost every time. Then in the same John, the same John, in the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 4, he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. So false spirit is a false, false prophet is a false spirit, true prophet is a true spirit. The same John is using spirit for a prophet. Don't believe every spirit, means don't believe in every prophet. The spirit, it says, that confesseth that Jesus is the Christ is of God. It means the prophet that says that Jesus is the Christ, is the Messiah, the Messiah is from Allah. That's what John says. I said, well, find out whether this spirit, this prophet, Muhammad, does say that Jesus is the Christ. Open Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 45, it says, so behold, the angel said, O Mary, in Allah, that Allah gives you glad tidings of a word from him. Ismuhul Masih, his name will be the Messiah, translated Christ. Muhammad said, Is he the Christ? Yes, that's what every Muslim believes. On the testification of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, 1,000 million Muslims of the world, they believe that Jesus is the Christ. He says, the spirit that confesses, the prophet that says that Jesus is the Christ is of God. Why don't you apply this to Muhammad? And says, St. John, in the Gospel of St. John, he says, he says, he that is born of spirit is spirit, and he that is born of the flesh is flesh. So do spirits beget? Do they prohibit? He says, no. Then how can you be born of spirit? No. In, what it means there is that who is spiritually inclined is spiritual. Who is materialistically inclined is flesh. What brought you here tonight? Some kind of gift that you were expecting from D-Dad? You know, he's going to give you some sweet meats? What? Some chocolates? Is that what brought you here? If that was the case, and suppose I give it out to you, you are materialistically inclined. Material things brought you here. So you are a materialist. In the language of the Bible, you are fleshy, you are of the flesh. Materialist. If it was spiritual consideration, motivation that brought you here, then you are spiritual, you are a spirit, though you are not a spirit, you are solid flesh and bones. But you are spiritually inclined. You are spiritual. This, the gospel language, say he that is born, means a thing that motivates you, that brings you up into being. If it is spirit, spiritually then you are a spirit. And if you are fleshly, you are flesh. Material, you are flesh. It doesn't mean a Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit every time the word spirit is used. So Jesus says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. So this spirit, this Holy Ghost, if it's a Holy Ghost, every church and denomination claims it. Everybody seems to be in touch. You know, at your beck and call, you press the button and it's there. You ask the Jehovah's Witnesses. He says, yes, we have it. Ask the Roman Catholics. They got it. Ask Brother Jimmy Swaggart. He says, he's got it. Everybody has it. All those cults that he mentions in his books, among these 30 books, there's one on cults. 
you read them, he says, look, the, every cultist says he's got the spirit. Who? The Holy Ghost. Everybody's got it. And they're all going in different directions. So one spirit taking you all into opposite directions from God? No. As Brother Swagat said yesterday, either we are both right or we, are, we can both be wrong. You both can be right. So you have a thousand sects and denomination among the whites of South Africa, among the whites. And 3,000 among the blacks. In America, I was given to understand that you've got 40 different Baptist churches. Each and every one has got the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. And they're all going in different directions. Is it from God? Can it be from God? All going in different directions. All say they are Baptists and everyone has got the Holy Ghost. So I said, you see, this, you haven't got the solution to the problems. Answers. Jesus, I have yet many things to say unto you. Many. Many in English is more than one. At least you understand that English. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. All is also more than one. I am asking my Christian brethren for the past 40 years. I don't want many solutions. Give me one. That the Holy Ghost gave you in 2000 years. One. Something that Jesus Christ had not already told you in so many different words. One. Any church, any denomination, any cult, bring me one new thing that the Holy Ghost gave you. And it's not forthcoming. One. I don't want many. Jesus says, ye cannot bear them now. The reason why he didn't give is not because he didn't have it. He had the solution to the problems of mankind till doomsday. God gave it to him. But the people were not fit to receive them. That's what he's saying. He's pleading with us. Ye cannot bear them now means you haven't got that capacity. And the truth of that statement is writ large in the Bible. Again and again, Jesus Christ, he tells his disciples, ye of little faith, you got no iman. You have no faith. Little faith, if whatever you have is little, tiny. Ye of little faith. Ye of little faith. How many times? Again and again. And he explains to them spiritual truths as he is explaining to little children and they can't understand what he's talking about. So he says, I even yet without understanding, yet. And when he's provoked further, he says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. This is what he's calling his disciples. Not the Jews, the generality of Jews. He called them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchers, you wicked and adulterous generation and on and on. But no, now he's describing his disciples, his own disciples, his chosen ones. He said, oh faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? I said, if Jesus was a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would have committed that honorable harakiri, suicide. But as a Jew, he couldn't afford to do that. You know, he loved life dearly. He loved life dearly. So he says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. I said, that spirit of truth is Muhammad. Muhammad is the prophet, no, we say, as-sadiqul wadul, I mean, the prophet who is faithful, truthful, prophet, as-sadiqul wadul, I mean, the truthful, the faithful, he is the prophet of truth. Spirit of truth is the prophet of truth, Muhammad. And he guided mankind into all truth, all your problems. Bring them, bring them, bring them. 